we're gonna get uh, warmed up on these hand poses for the next 20 minutes. Let me get some jams on real quick. So today we're going to be taking a look at some animated hands from some actual shots that I have. Um, we're going to be taking looks at, at animated hands from uh, three things. Pinocchio, uh, Mob Psycho 100, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, well, yeah, the uh, took. Um, if I can find if I can find the shot I'm thinking of Tokyo uh, Tokyo Sinks 2020. But there's some exquisite hand animation in Pinocchio, and in Mo and some pretty good limited full animation hand posing in uh, Mops pretty fucking good limited full animation hand posing in Mops like a 100 that we'll take a look at. I'll be periodically flipping back and forth between me and uh, between focus or be between me and Miles. I'm getting a little bit warmed up right now, but I'm, um, who knows, I'm using the same stuff that we've been using from last week, which is that kind of palm wedge shape, and I'm fond of using this little cylinder kind of sh shape for the, uh, wrist back here. But there's a couple other techniques I'm going to show off today, some of them that I've drawn previously. One of them involves something that some something that some of you here might be familiar with the tornado tornado yeah. i don't even know what is this uh that oh the ellipse yeah the ellipse the concentric ellipses thing where you don't lift your pencil off the page So let's see if I can find an example of that that I drew previously earlier today. Here we go. So on screen right now, on uh, on Twitch, these are examples of one of the one of the techniques we're going to go over today. The tornado, right here. In in utilization of hand drawing, 
Uh, some of you might recognize this as like a technique that I've shown previously with, with figure drawing. Um, specifically, it's a, it's a technique where, um, well, here's the hybrid, here's the hybrid version where I use like kind of mannequinization bits for some of the solid bits like the rib cage. But the parts that become the tornado uh, are like the soft bits, kind of like this, or parts of the limbs, like this. And you basically like use these kind of concentric circles, like this, to sort of describe the direction that the form is going. Like for example, if this forearm is going towards this, it's going to look like this. And it's a way to kind of wrap your head around um, how these these 3D forms. Like you wouldn't necessarily draw like this, um, unless you're like trying to solve a drawing problem or something. You wouldn't necessarily draw like this to, to actually work out your uh, to actually like make a drawing per se. But you would use this as a tool for understanding how these forms work. Kind of warm up your brain to reading things three dimensionally. So this this kind of tornado hybrid mannequin that I've done, um, and of course like the version of this that is just a tornado is like goes like this, like here where you just do like the whole full figure, kind of like this. You might throw in a gesture line or two. I'm doing an itty bitty one here as an example. But you can do the same thing with hands, or actually many different kinds of areas of localized anatomy. That's sort of what I've done here, in order to kind of like further understand how the hands work for me mentally, basically. I use these circles that are kind of, these are indications of circles. Indicating what direction stuff is going. For example, because this is bending at the knuckle here, the direction of the circle changes. So other stuff too, like this. This there's three regions of the palm here that I'm trying to describe that are formed around this kind of triangle wedge at the center here. This triangle wedge and divot. You might notice me when I do like the palm a lot of times when I'm doing like this kind of ice cream sandwich wedge. I'll often do like this little kind of triangle shape in there. And that's to indicate that. Yeah, the palm is basically separated into three regions, uh, simplified regions. And that's what I was kind of like describing with a little bit of the tornado going on in there. So other stuff too, like um, I'm kind of doing a simplified version of the metacarpals right here. If you notice in this picture, which is like the the bone the bones that are inside your hand, inside that are inside your palm. So I've kind of like done these little simple ball shape ball socket shapes for the knuckles, and then like the bones inside the hand are just these little ball socket things that connect up to the complex metacarpals of the base. Right there. And these are all just tools to kind of help you wrap your head around these really complex shapes. And also, as I said up here, this, I was using my own hand as reference for these, but I didn't copy my hand. These are like very inventive poses. Like, I would bring up my hand for reference every now and then, but I was not really, like, strictly copying it. Because the goal is to understand, not to just, like, copy. Like, you want to understand how these hands work so you can put them in different poses and um, stuff. Mr. Brickwall has some players of the Tornado technique. I think there is a uh, uh, brick. I remember seeing it before. I can try to see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, I think there is. Steven Silver might actually have something on it too. 
He's the originally who originally was it Stephen Silver? Yeah, well, Stephen Silver originally taught taught me that technique, but it's a. Uh, you can also find it in uh, Glenn Vilpu's drawing manual. Some bones in there. It's fun. Why not? So I'll make this part of that folder now. Yeah, the tornado technique is mostly uh, like understanding ellipses and stuff, and it's good for. Uh, for short, for shortening, yes. Shortening, especially when uh, you're just learning it out. Was it uh, and, was it Cynix yeah. who did who did a video on that, or was it Megan? No, Mike, it Mikey? wasn't Cynix. Let me look. But uh, I, I I don't remember who it was. I'm trying to like find it right now. Sikra. Sikra has a video on foreshortening. Sikra, yeah. yes. Well, I knew. It was I'll get I'll get the link for that real quick. Yeah, I'll link it in Twitch. Oh, you're... There, it's linked in Twitch now. I'm like, yeah, okay. But yeah, um, let's see here. I'm gonna do some more invented hands, maybe showing off a little bit more of the tornado technique. Let's see here. What do I got here? But, uh, uh one thing I actually recommend if uh, you're having trouble with ellipses, draw mugs. That's what I did for a while when I was, I, I didn't, this was like before. Big old cylinder shape like mugs, seriously basically, studying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like if you if feel like, oh, drawing just cylinders and stuff is boring, just draw mugs. Like draw a mug and then put some whipped cream on top. Boom, you, you drew some hot chocolate. Again, try That's to find fun ways in order to study fundamentals. Sounds like Dr. Steve Brule advice. Just, just draw some hot chocolate, you dingus. For your health. I would like an art version of, of Dr. Steve Brule. <laughs> I have no idea who that is, but maybe I could be that person. I'll show them later. Um, or maybe during an intermission or something. But there, uh, it's uh, John C. Riley playing a character on, uh, on, uh, that was originally on Tim and Eric Awesome Show. He's like this possibly brain damaged um like tv local t local access tv news reporter basically But yeah, he, he gives like he gives like this really like it's like blatantly obvious that he's not a real doctor, and uh, he gives like like the worst, weirdest advice basically for his little health segments. And yeah, he, ha he has an actual he has an actual show, uh, spinoff show from Tim and Eric Awesome Show also. But anyway, yeah, hands. Yeah, Sikra is pretty old school at YouTube, relatively speaking. Uh, but that video still holds up pretty, pretty reasonably. Mm -hmm. You know what is old school art YouTube though? Uh, Mark Crilly. Mm -hmm. Does Mark Crilly still post stuff? I'm gonna go look. Yeah, he does. Dope for him. So I didn't really use the tornado on this, but I can go back through maybe with a tornado to further understand these forms that I've just drawn. So I kind of went into them really, really loose without really f fully marking down what direction they're going in. I'm just going to use this to kind of further understand them a bit. And when you do something like this, uh, your brain kind of starts to fill in the gaps in a way that makes a little bit more sense for this. 
So these are these are a good way to kind of like wrap your head around this stuff. Hang on, I'm gonna go streamer mode so I don't constantly hear. Let's see, streamer mode on. There we go. Discord no notifications popping off. People slowly crawling in. Uh, we started off with like only we started off with only thirty six people. Now we're at forty six people. Ooh. Okay, Google. How much time left on timer? You've got three minutes and twenty seconds to go. Cool. We'll take a short break. That happens. Maybe Miles can talk a little bit about hand stuff or some of the projects, things that they're working on over the break. I need to get some migration. Using this technique is especially good for the fingers. Like, if you want to do like a hybrid tornado technique, uh, the ball socket method. You can even start like this, like the Bern Hogarth sort of spindly hands, and then go back through with the tornado on the connective tissue point parts, basically, to kind of mass in and figure that stuff out. Cool thing about doing the tornado is you can always lower the opacity on it and like, like oh I've got like the guts of this kind of thing worked worked out so now I can go back in and do a nicer inked hand or something. So if you have a tough hand pose or something like that that you're trying to work out for an illustration or animation or whatever, you can use a technique like this to kind of mass in the stuff and wrap your head around what you're what you're actually drawing. It becomes a little bit easier to visualize it using something like this. The tornado technique is also very endorphin friendly too. So it's a good way to give your brain positive reinforcement for making some observational um, habits. I'm just kind of roughing in sort of like I might do a first pass of working this up into what would eventually be tur turned into an ink of this hand or something. I just want to work out some more of the details before I would move on beyond that. Okay Google stop. Okay Google set timer for five minutes. Done. Five minutes added to your timer. that top finger. Maybe there could be a thumb here. Yeah, 
I'll leave that up. So let's take a look at what Miles is up to. Hmm? Oh, I'm just brainstorming. Brainstorming some hands. Yeah, so I have uh, one robot character of mine, and I wanted to, uh, like, be a mix of this sort of material that's muscle-like, and then harder metal parts. So this part right here is supposed to be sort of muscle-like, but I'm not following it how the muscles look entirely on the hand. I'm kind of, like, merging some of the muscle groups together. But I wanted to, like, kind of... And I have a sewn together thing and then these right here will be the sort of wires and the back of the hand is going to be metal I'm actually going to go uh, use the restroom real quick and I'll be right Yeah, I, I I'm going just a bit slow cuz I'm trying to get used to Krita or just using um, like Wacom drawing tablet and then looking at my screen in order to draw because this is new territory for me drawing otherwise and I'm still trying to learn because I want to use uh, my computer for animation stuff so I just I need to get used to it you know Okay, Google, how much time left on the timer? 23 seconds remaining. All right, I'm going to bring up the stuff we're going to look at. Uh, I, I am using Krita because I am too cheap to buy an actual okay, drawing Google, program. Stop. And also, And also, I don't know how to pirate stuff. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I'm gonna, how am I gonna bring this on the screen?
Maybe I just might have to do display capture. I'll probably have to do that. Alright, so I'm going to swap it back to my screen then. And let's see here. Let's get the always on top. That's okay. Good. Alright, so there's a couple shots in particular I'm going to yoink real quick before I bring it up on screen. But uh, someone actually, uh, someone, some genius has actually done uh, us a beautiful favor and uploaded like tons and tons of scenes from Pinocchio to, uh, to Tsukuga Burrow. So we're going to be taking a good look at some of these today because Ooh. there's fantastic hand poses in Pinocchio. Uh, uh, some of them are three-fingered glove, glove hands, some of them are more human hands. Four fingers and more human, an human anatomy. So we'll take a look at that real quick. Let me just uh, bring it up real quick. I'm going to have to... Let's see... Uh, display capture. I'll have to go to, probably have to go to display capture. Display capture. I, I, I might go up to... Then. Hi. There we go. Hi, Let's do that. Right here. Just don't run that for now. Uh... Alright, feel free to keep drawing these hands up in the upper left, but um, we're going to take a look at some of the, this lovely animation here from Pinocchio. And paying special close attention to the hands. So look at uh, this lovely scene right here with Pinocchio with his three finger gloves. Okay, so watch Geppetto's hands. Check that out. Look at that. There's a kind of like an, there's some. So his hand, Geppetto's hands are kind of a mix of like more cartoony Pinocchio hands, but four fingers with fingernails, and um, uh, and like little bits of like anatomy you can kind of see like the the knuckle ridges and stuff like that a bit more than you would on like pinocchio's fingers but like at, at its core these hands are kind of based on like a ball sort of the same way that pinocchio's is but they're a little bit more grounded in human hands human hand anatomy a bit more than pinocchio's would be <laughs> But you know, it's like uh, all the principles of like hand drawing apply that we've been looking at. Like, uh, like there's a, these kind of arcs that go over the knuckles and the fingers, tracking them together like that. You can kind of get the sense of that here on Geppetto's hands. So his pinky sticking out there, adding a little bit of expression to his hand there. This one's a really kind of super simplified hand right there that's gotten kind of a little chunky. But I love this right here. This. Both his hands kind of scoop, cupping in like a scoop right there together. And then folding together, clasping. And like the, if you notice, like his fingers are kind of exaggerated and squishing. His fingertips right there. There's a really good sense of like you can get you can get like the sense of the three dimensional palm going horizontal from us. So like uh, compared to like earlier in the shot, um, Geppetto's Geppetto's hands kind of look a little bit like kind of the ball socket, uh, the ball based Pinocchio hands a little bit more until they like turn sideways, and then you can see more like kind of the palm plane going on there. Um, when uh, when Geppetto's uh, hands are more parallel to the camera, like his hands like flatter, they look like they they obey the rules of real hands a little bit more than like cartoon hands, uh, like Pinocchio or Mickey Mouse hands. Reaching for his, reaching for his beautiful new son. Yay! <laughs> He's just so happy. Yeah. 
is a one happy dad. Yeah. Okay. So we'll take a look at some other um, examples in here. So check this out, what Pinocchio is doing here. Some lovely bit of a little bit of hand acting here, like Pinocchio kind of reaching out for Figaro. Like, oh. A little bit of being unsure there, and you kind of see like his, uh, the, there's acting in Pinocchio's hand there. With his little three finger glove with his middle, with like his middle finger kind of drop, drooping down a bit, like, like, oh, a little bit of apprehension there. It smooths out when he gets ready to pet Figaro. Oh, kitty. And his hand, like, actually his, fan, his hand, like, tilts and follows the curve of, of Figaro's uh, kitty back there when he pets him. It's a really beautif beautifully animated pet. And Pinocchio's whole body kind of reacts to what's going on there. So you see a little bit here, like a, a kind of a standard issue, like Mickey Mouse hand right there on Pinocchio right there. But then he reaches around here and wraps it against the round goldfish bowl. And then you see there's a little bit of acting right, right there on the hand right there when he's being lifted up. About here, like his, his, his first finger lifts up a bit. There's like little bits of personality being put into those hands at all these points. Pinocchio anticipates dripping his finger in there. Oh, that's <laughs> one of the reasons why I like dripping. And it's a rel it's surprisingly oh, very lie. simple. Like yeah, it's surprisingly very simple animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hand acting is extremely important in animation. So we're gonna be taking a good look at some of this stuff too. And some of the best is Pinocchio. Um, so I really wanted to, I really wanted to show this one in particular because there is hand acting in the scene in the shakes that are going on in Geppetto's hands. Right here. Check that out. <laughs> And it's all in the hands too. Like uh, the rest of his body isn't shaking. Uh, isn't shaking. It's it's made, it's the hands that are doing the shaking. And th this is a very very memorable scene. Like he's trying to sneak with his legs, but he's like so nervous that his hands are shaking. Oh! And I love it. I love the comedy of it because it's like he's holding this really dangerous firearm and going shh with it right up in front of his face and then he takes look at that look at that he takes a look at it like huh? what am i doing <laughs> that's dangerous you can see him like have that little moment of like <laughs> what the heck am i doing with this thing in my face just like really brief it's like so subtle but like it's it's just like little touches like that that make this so amazing And if you notice, like this, the way it's shaking is going. It's kind of going like one two, one two, one two, one two. Like Geppetto is on ones, and the the shake is going like on ones. So like one two, one two, one two, one two, one two, one two, one two. So if you want to use like a, a fearful character shaking their hands out scare, uh, in a like a frightened manner, just remember what you saw here with Geppetto doing this. So one two one two one two one two one two. Do, 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 do. There we go. Here's another really good scene because of the that hand right there. Watch Pinocchio's hand. Waggle. 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 
Waggle. Open. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Just check it out, like, look at that. Also, if you notice his hand, like, kind of really takes a dra his backhand tra takes, like, a really drastic change of direction right there. Too. And uh, so let's take a look at his. Uh, oh, he's not looking at me at this hand, but let's take a look at the other hand now, too. So he's swinging it back and forth really casually. He's got his knuckle kind of emphasized there. When he kind of gets a little off balance there, his, his hand sort of opens up. He's like, whoop! Reacting to it. His, hand, his palms are open. He's kind of bracing himself a bit, like, what the f. Oh! His hands are his hand poses are also contrasting each other an awful lot too. Like, look at that. So there's something in here that I wanted to. Also, another thing is that you if you go back through and you track this, you can like notice that like. His hands follow a really good arc, especially that one that one down below here. Like look at the look at the look at this thing. The, the kind of almost like figure eight motion that goes like up and around, but then it kind of gets disrupted in a different pattern and uh, follows a different arc. But it's all following an arc. Like you could just like you could probably like kind of tell sort of what the acting is from this scene if you eliminated everything but his hands. Anyway, so now we're getting in, into the more of the kind of rotoscopy Disney animation, the blue fairy here, whose hands are more or less kind of just like, her design is basically like a, roto a better than rotoscoped uh, human being. Uh, character. Like, there's not really too much cartooning in her. She's very close to, like, a live-action person. But you can see even in her, there's really nice little subtle acting in her, in her, like, her fingers and her hands. Oh, this, yeah, this scene. This, I was looking for this. Watch your hands. So this is when you get into more like kind of realistic humanistic act, uh, acting and stuff. Her hands were handled really, really delicately for this. Like in general, they kind of had, had to handle her really delicately. Otherwise, she would go. She would wind up going uncanny valley. She does look a little out of place compared to the other characters, but she's plausible as like a um, otherworldly f fairy, fairy. Um, presence, I guess. She always felt kind of out of place in the film compared to the other characters, though, even though she is a fantastic, fantastically drawn and executed character. A subtle little pinky. head acting stuff I'm looking for more but you can see like there's a little bit of some more of her realistic hand acting going on about here gripping that uh, that wand of hers pointing it down little subtle little subtle motions that you could only get out of get from somebody who would rotoscoped to well rotoscope to understand they didn't like copy the rotoscope but um, this, so what, the people who animated this understand how hands work very well. There we go, Jiminy Cricket, there we go. Jiminy Cricket has like probably some of the strongest hand poses in the film. And some of the strongest poses for that matter.
<laughs> what's great is like that point there like it, you can see like the whole line of action of him of himself like anticipation point you can see like the whole line of action uh, driving up into that point that he's making there settles back it goes into kind of a jazz a jazz bop there Let's see if there's anything else here take a look at maybe like one or two more shots and then I want to go on to mob cycle 100 so I wouldn't say this is the best oh there's some good stuff there so I wouldn't say that early stuff is the best but um, this is good watch this That little gesture there is just like so subtle and nice. <laughs> I don't think there's anything here. No. All right, so we're gonna go look at Mom Psycho 100 now. I'm gonna try to find mainly, mainly ray gun shots because those usually involve a lot of cool ass hand poses. But well, Reagan is such a simple character design that the animators like found like really fun ways to kind of play with him by just like making him act do a lot of absurd at overacting through his hands. Let's see if I can find some really good key shots in here. That's not... Yeah, Mob Psycho 100 I love in general because the character designs are so simple um, that the animators have a lot of room to play with them. So it's way more about how the characters move and the individuality of the animators than it is about kind of making some kind of ornamental, like, overly designed uh, anime character design that looks more like a sculpture than, than something that moves. Here we go. So going, going far into the future from Pinocchio, we see the same principles of hand drawing apply to this stuff in contemporary animation versus Pinocchio, but applied in very different ways in terms of like how stuff gets exaggerated and what the frame budget is to display things. It's a really, really strong hand pose right there, the emphasis on his wrist and so on. Actually, I think the third thing we'll probably take a look at is some loop on the third stuff um, after this. Instead of uh, instead of uh, Tokyo Sinks 2020. Yeah, check this out, like, even on this shot right here, like, Reagan, Reagan's expressive hands are at work. His hands are very important for his acting. Ooh. Including, like, right here, but this goofy little action right here where he's pretending to type, where he's pretending to type on his, uh, or do something on his computer. His hands sell sell him as a character. Like he's a con artist who uses his hands to kind of razzle dazzle people, but he does the same thing with his audience because like the frame budget on this stuff is really small. <laughs> so uh, the and he's not a very detailed character design. So so much of him is sold through his hands, which I think is fantastic. So here now let's. I don't know if this would be the best shot. Showing off what Reagan can do with his hands. Yeah, probably not. I think there's some of it here. 
But, like, the best stuff is, like, when he's standing still, where his arm is, like, whipping around like crazy. Like, there we go. Like, this move. There's, there's like, so many smears and stuff there with his hand and his arm. Like, this is totally unnecessary. It's completely silly and absurd, but it, it sells him so much as a character. Look at that shitty hand right there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the hands get drawn shitty. There we go. There's some good hands right here. And Reagan's not the only one with good hands in the show, either. The hands are very important for the, the whole cast. There's some really good hands in this in this whole sequence here. And expressions, for that matter. Wow. I actually never noticed that. That's his name right there in, uh, in English letters. Miles, you there? I, I'm here. Yeah. I just... You're just watching the animation stuff. But look at this. Look, look, at, look, look, at how, look at how the hands are exaggerated, pressed against the face right there, like cur curling back the knuckles, wrapping around the sides of the face. Like This is really super creative-ass stuff right here. And it doesn't just stop there. Like uh, now, his, now his palms are flat against the side of his face. His face is being squished. Face is in close-up. Palms peel away. There's a palm in the foreground right here, and there's, a, and there's another hand back there making the same kind of gesture that this one is, but a good ways away. And then that is used to kind of sell the rotation around the body that's sort of happening there. And like, how do you think of this stuff on the fly? You invent it. That's how you think of it. Like, these are animators that are vibing with this stuff. Smear on the fingers right there. Look at that. Look at that contrast and facial expression right there. Reagan is, uh, like, this is very different from the, like, the dot eyes look Reagan stuff we saw earlier. This is, like, way more detailed character expression and the uh, <laughs> and the animators are able to get away with it look at the contrast in that pose right there this is a principle of limited full animation or in order to make things stand out you severely contrast the pose oh and thank you Vic, Vic Trollo for the uh, Twitch Prime sub uh, yeah like Look at the contrast in that pose and the contrast in the hand between the poses. Like he's palm palm upwards, palm downwards right there. Yeah, there's a lot you can take away from this shot for sure. Look at that. It's kind of like a cotton mouth ball effect going on with his face right there. I would want to actually hear the line of dialogue that the animator was using there. Yeah, Reagan has such good, such good hand poses. This is this isn't even his best stuff either. Yeah, so that check it out. Look, there's that triangle palm wedge right there that I've been showing showing you guys. Yeah, you can seriously like on some of the best shots of Reagan, you can do you can do like um, um, you can do like uh, hand pose studies. And even facial expression studies, for that matter. <laughs> like I briefly kind of looks like John from Gar John Arkwell, John Arbuckle from Garfield. Could you imagine, like, if, if like the Mob Psycho 100 team uh, did a take on Garfield? Oh god. That's something- I would love to see that. John, I was so hungry. Yeah.
I like how the cover of his little book, his little book here, has like a, a close up on one of his hands. Damn! Jesus, that face. He looks like an angry John Arbuckle in this shot. Not gonna lie. Let's see. That's lovely. I'm actually going to download this and convert it and then maybe do some draw over studies of it for some of tonight's stuff. What time is it now? Miles, do you have any input? Uh, I do not. I am trying to. S <laughs> I am trying to. Anyway, uh, go. Th anyone can go through the, the Sakugaburo uh, animation program within Crit Eye. Yeah, anyone can go through the Sakugaburo Pinocchio stuff, but I'm going to post in classroom chat and in Twitch chat. Um, this Mob Psycho 100 shot of Reagan, which I think is fantastic to study from. Pinocchio, also very extremely worth studying from, but I'm gonna concentrate on this. Uh, so let's see here, what time is it? It is 6.34. Cool, we got a good amount of time left in the class tonight. Um, You're so confused. Let's see here, I better turn this off. Get back to my shit here. Uh, I'm going to uh, take a very short break while I convert some files so I can bring import them into Harmony. And uh, then we'll be back, and I'll be doing a demo of uh, doing some studies of Reagan's hands. And then maybe we'll see if we can get some, if we can like play with some of the, the same ideas that are going on in, in that sequence that we just saw, of the contrasting poses in Reagan's hands and the expressiveness that's going on in them. to move. Just gonna make sure harmony is open. it and it should take a little bit longer and once it gets in there I'm just gonna get a swig of water and then we'll get started. Trying to do animation stuff on Quito? Yeah, I'm like trying to. Yeah. yeah. There we go. I was able to import it. Just make sure it finishes and then save it.
Oops, that is the wrong thing. There it is. Just gotta put it in the right spot. It's immediately a close up on Reagan's noggin. Someone asked, uh, what are you trying to get open in, in Krita? They're offering to help you troubleshoot. Miles? I'm here. My Wi-Fi cut out on me for a second. Oh. Yeah. Again, huh? Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to take a look at some of the strong hand poses here that uh, Reagan takes. This is a really fucking nice one right here, but it's also really not very simple. I want to start with a strong, simple one. I do like this I cannot believe this shit kind of pose that he's got there. I think that's a good one. So that's actually helped for three frames. Yeah, this is. There's a lot of animating on threes happening in this, I think. So instead of getting caught up in the detail, I'm going to just start with kind of sort of massing in the gesture of what his hand is doing a little bit, because I'm trying to kind of observe what's happening with the contrasting actions between the poses. So a few things about this hand is the top plane of the knuckles is, or the palm of the hand is somewhere around there. On the far side of his palm with his thumb, it's kind of curving up like that at the base. a very very simple hand right here that kind of goes off frame but very very simple oh, uber simplified fingers like they just drew like the the fingernails is like these kind of like blobs but that pose is in contrast to this pose is angled like this. His palm is kind of doing this kind of scoop thing right here, I would say. Because it's got like kind of a dish where he's like kind of making some kind of like a, um, a supplicating gesture, I want to say. I'm going to kind of mass in his fingers right there. And uh, it's very, very kind of exaggerated. I like the art style being used here on the, on the fingers is something I want to kind of key into more in the future myself in my own animation. But like that kind of like angular knuckle sort of look that's going on there. Here, one second, I'm going to turn on the music. It's a little bit loud. All right, so. Like that angular anime knuckle look coming from anime artists that really understand how, ha how hands work is something I want to try to key into more because they're not really afraid to put like put the hand full full frame to really sell it. You can 
you can see like if you break it down by gesture you can really feel it like you can feel like the muscle exertion and the tendon exertion that's happening in Reagan's hand just by looking at it So his hand is further off panel here, or off frame. Comes back down here. And we see like really, really hyper exaggerated knuckles going on here. Reinforcing the, the comedy of what's happening. Like you often see in like a lot of more funny scenes like this in anime, like the, the way the fingers are drawn reinforces what's actually happening like if this is like a really serious scene reagan's fingers might not be as like kind of like wonky goofy kind of bulby sort of whatever they might look more like kind of like blades or they might look like more like slender or something a little more delicate but because this is reinforcing how goofy and hyper exaggerated or desperate or pathetic the character is or something or what a con artist he is um, his fingers take on these really kind of goofy like bulbous -y, bulbous of the knuckles kind of angular quality So I can't be too sure what's happening here, but let's see here. Kind of looks like that, like his palm is like doing that off screen, and we're seeing like some of the side of his hand and knuckle back there or something. His palm with his thumb or whatever. But it's enough to it's enough happening off frame that we can kind of fill in the gaps of what's happening with his hand there. So when it comes, if someone comes back on frame, we've kind of filled in the gaps with the, with the motion of what's happening. So there is some kind of chunky simplification going on here in the cleanup, like really kind of crummy angled lines there. And this, this maybe should have been drawn like more, a little more like this. Some shortcuts on the cleanup artist's part for this particular frame going on here. Keep that in mind when you're doing studies like these. Sometimes the cleanup artists take shortcuts. It works in this hand's case because like the information is more or less there and it's going by so quickly. Oof. Poor Miles' Wi-Fi died on them. Miles, in the future, I actually want to talk to you about um, maybe troubleshooting something that's whatever's going on with your house internet, whether it's your router or your physical internet that's causing these recurring issues. Because you've had these problems like so many times here. I want to help you. It's no fun having a poopy internet. Because in this day and age, like your uh, your Wi-Fi shouldn't be that shitty, whatever your whatever your house is paying for. So it's probably the router, I hope. And if that's the case, there's a there are routers I can recommend. Yeah, well, the other thing you can do is you can get an Ethernet cable and just uh, just get a really long Ethernet cable and bring it to your room. Is that what's going on? It's a router issue. But yeah, look at this, folks. There's that old principle of the arcs that track o track over the fingers and the knuckles.
going across the hand like that. Yeah, well, we'll figure it out. Um, the best way to find that out is uh, plug your, um, at the very least, like uh, at the very least, just get a really long Ethernet cable and um, hook yourself up that way. You can get an Ethernet, um, an Ethernet hub for your room, and just get just get the Ethernet cable put in there. Another solution is to get a a, um, a Wi-Fi extender or just a better router that will oh, that will serve your house a lot better. Uh, we've got one at our house that uh, works very nicely. I have not had any problems with it. I'm using it right now, in fact. Let's sneak in a little bit of head practice here, too. So we got the eye line somewhere around here for Reagan. I'm going to put it under his eyes. This is going to be a regular feature, by the way, of uh, all my classes going forward. We're, we're going to be doing draw over studies of existing animation a lot, and uh, we'll also be moving in the direction of doing more animation demos related to the subjects that we're studying. That was always the plan. Like, because like the, the figure drawing I was doing was to the end of making animation. Yeah, I'm looking at this and I'm kind of like thinking about stuff I'm going to put into the designs that we are working on for the game project that we're working on. Like, I want to come up. I want to come up with adapting the character designs that we're working on for the game that we're that we're making that um, can be broken down very easily into simple shapes that uh, whoever is animating them can put on their own kind of individual individualistic spin on it without it looking terribly weird. Like here's just a generic head that kind of has some of the components I'm talking about. And then a lot can be done with like a really simple hair character design. So I'm kind of detouring away from heads, uh, from hands now into heads. Briefly. playing with stuff like that later tomorrow for the character design stuff we're going to be doing for the game project that we're working on. See quite a bit of cheating going on in this uh, in these knuckles in this hand by the cleanup artist. It's a little puzzling. I do like that contrast. That, there's a limited full animation contrast pose example. Like, he's got his head pointed down there. His body's down there. His head is closer to us here. His upper body's leaning this way, close to us. The hands up here. The fingers curling back like that. And this one, the hand goes down. The head goes up. The head goes way back, and instead of being down with the draw kind of small, 
jaws really wide open. The hands full frame, or good portion of the frame anyway, but it's pointing like really in our like right in our face. Again, is just really pushing his face. And Della Daisy asks, uh, "What are we doing? We are looking at Reagan hand poses as part of our studies this evening. Doing draw over studies." We are paying, paying special close attention to the hands, but we are taking a holistic approach to this. Because the hands are a very important part of the performance here, but they're just one part of the animation here. And that's that's why we're studying hands here, so we can use them in stuff like this for our own work. So it kind of settles a bit here, like these lines are really kind of <clears throat> pushed on the finger, but then it kind of settles a bit back there. And the hand that is the most expressive, right here, well aside from the face being really expressive, like mm -hmm. aside from that, like his hand is really being expressive, like kind of doing a hyperextension thing a little bit, kind of in the knuckles or whatever, like flexing the back of his hand so the bones of the uh, bones of the uh, hand are very visible. You can see his knuckles following the usual arc of fingers. It's kind of, there's a little bit of blobby fakery going on on the thumb there, see? You can get away with little hand and feet cheats and other things like that in quick quickly moving frames as long as the overall motion works really well. But you don't want it to be like, you know, terrible. Not specifically Ethan's method, but this is like something that, this is like a basic tool in your tool belt method for artists and animators for understanding existing animation. The main thing is, is you want to know what you want to like pull out of what you're trying to you want to know why you're studying something like this like you want to know what you're trying to pull out of this in this case I'm paying special close attention to his hand acting and also to the con contrasting posing that his whole figure is taking I'm also taking a good look at his facial expressions too while I'm at it But the hands are extremely important for, especially for a character like this. And in anime in general, hands are very important because oftentimes, like you'll, oftentimes, like if you don't have a very good frame budget on like a limited animation production, and most anime productions are limited animation, um, there's different kinds of cheats that have to be used to get to get away with a less is more approach. And hands are one of those things. Like, if you have artists that are extremely good at drawing really expressive hands, you can sell an action with just like a simple hand, hand flick. It's important to not just copy it, right? Yes. But you copy it to internalize it and to understand. You don't copy it to plagiarize, you copy it to understand. So like I would never like pass, I would never like trace over something like this and then pass it off as my own. I would, I would draw over it to understand it and then that would give me good headway in figuring out problem solving in my own work uh, when I want to do stuff with hands in it or whatever in this case. And the more of these that you do, the more your visual library of like tricks and tools of the trade expands. So you can kind of like 
remix different ideas together. That's why we're going to be progressively looking at more and more animation over time here, because we're gradually going to be increasing our visual library. Mine especially, because I'm the one teaching these classes, I'm always going to be here. But um, I'm trying to do this as a way to expose myself and you guys to animation where we do kind of like deep dive observations of like how this stuff is put together so we can make good ass animation ourselves. What I'm trying to get out of this is I'm trying to like I'm trying to groove with it so that like when I get more into my own animation stuff I'll be able to apply more of it like after doing this when I get when I do another shot with one of my characters involving lots of hand poses I'll have like Oh, there was these studies of Reagan I did, and uh, let's see, what was I, what was I thinking, what was going through my head then when I was observing what was going on there? And I, was, and I think, oh, there was some cool hand poses that did this and this and this, and uh, they contrasted with each other in this way and that way. Then the animator played with things this way or that way. Like I wouldn't use these specific poses at all, but like this, the idea. Of just being able to like fluidly fluidly play with contrasting facial expressions and posing and gesture and stuff and having the freedom to like break the character model like this is this is breaking reagan's character model all over the place deliberately so like it broke it broke breaks his character model so much that his his written name is on his face at the beginning of the animation. It breaks his character model so much that what the fuck is his hand doing? What the fuck is his hand even doing here? Like, this, I mean, we I know why this is. Like, it's supposed to reinforce this kind of rotation, this exaggerated sort of body rotation thing going on here, where he winds up back over here again. But what the fuck is his hand, hand even doing here? <laughs> His arm would be kind of broken back here, wouldn't it? Broken and doing like kind of a Stretch Armstrong thing, if, if we could actually see it. And I really like that, like, this is really, really simply drawn and stuff. But you can see, like, there's like this kind of like pushed exaggeration sort of going on, like, even like in his clothes and stuff. Even like on his buttons and, and so on. Like, really, really pushing things. This is very, very cartoony, exaggerated, hand posey stuff. Sort of doing that in there just real quick. And the animator gets really flexible with it throughout the whole thing. I wonder if there's like multiple animators that might have worked on parts of this shot, but I'm not. I don't know. Look at that. <laughs> Lovely contrast there. Also, notice the um, his fingers there. The blur line kind of effect going on there with the wiggly boo wiggle. -wiggle. I do like how he has kind of like a itty bitty baby head for some of these shots too. Like, giant head Reagan, itty bitty baby head. He looks, he looks like a shonen protagonist there. Looks like John Arbuckle, angry John Arbuckle there. Looks like he's gained weight here. Or he's doing like the chin again, uh, Aaron Hansen thing. <laughs> this one just looks creepy. <clears throat> like he changes like, you could almost say like he's a different character in every one of these, these frames. But it works because he's very he's a very simple character. So that when his expressions go all over the place, it kinda holds up. And that's the mat that's part of the magic and the fun of simplicity. The simpler you get with something, the more you can play with it. And that's that's the kind of anime animation that interests me the most. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I love, like, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is, like, probably the furthest in the other direction, I would say. Like, really, really ornate, ornamental characters that have really interesting, cool poses in the 
shot in the um, in the shots where they aren't really moving very much, and that's fine. Uh, I love that actually. Uh, what I don't love so much is like the Cupid doll, usually anime. Sorry to say, anime girl waifu stuff where the characters look like they're more like porcelain dolls than they than they are animated characters. At least in JoJo, there's like an amazing sense of design and originality to the characters. Like, you've seen, with with some exceptions, I don't mean to hate on people's waifu of choice or whatever, uh, most waifus are kind of interchangeable, and they look, a lot of them look very much the same. And, uh, well, not, I don't mean to just hate on that, hate on waifu anime, though, because this shit that I'm talking about happens in just about every genre of anime, so... But this is the but what my, the point I'm trying to make is like this kind of like leaning towards cartoony simplicity, so the animators have room to like play with the comedy and make stuff really expressive. This is the kind of stuff that I like. Hate on the waifu, you get the knifeu. Ugh. Oh. Well, uh, knowing what some uh, uh, knowing what some of my favorite uh, anime girl animes characters are like. Uh, I would definitely get the Naifu. Uh, which reminds me, um, When the Cicadas Cry is getting a remake. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, it, it it's a, fe a feel-good, lovely romantic comedy anime <laughs> that will just give you nothing but good vibes. It won't traumatize you at all, in any way. No, no. <laughs> Did the, is the remake for it already out? I thought it was coming out. But yeah, When the Cicadas Cry is amazing, um, but it's uh, it's traumatizing. Let me put it that way. <laughs> it's very it's very like rip out part of your soul kind of. Uh, when the when the Cicadas Cry. Or when they cry, it's also quote known as. It's a um, it's a psychological um, horror anime to, uh, with a that has a light a visual light novel appeal uh, like veneer to it, but it's actually a psychological horror anime and a very gut wrenching one. And it does not pull any punches. Oh my god. Um, it's one of the anime. It's one of the animes that, uh, un like, unfortunately, gets associated with like the Yandari uh, stereotype or whatever. But I, I think that would be selling it short. I mean, it does get a little bit kind of ex like exploitation film at times, but it's it's memorable. Eh. <laughs> yeah, it can't be helped. Anyway, let's take a look at a little bit more at what Reagan's doing here in detail. What time is it? It's only 7.07, .07. wow. So I'm going to maybe move on after going a little bit further into this into kind of an, an attempt at maybe some making some contrasting hand poses that are kind of loosely based on what I'm seeing Reagan doing here. So maybe start with like one second. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a uh, it's an enemy that will give you flashbacks. To uh, well, thankfully, to when you watched it, not it's not that traumatizing that you get PTSD out of it. But yeah, it's it's pretty horrific. All right, so I'm gonna use a generic generic dude. So Mr. Generic Dude is going to be kind of chilling out like this. He's going to be doing a couple contrasting poses loosely based off what, what we just saw Reagan doing. I'm going to invent them real quick. Peg this in size a little bit, I think. looking hand. better with that hand. Just want a kind of a rough hand to start with, just to kind of rough something in. super duper rough. I'm just trying to concentrate and get something that feels pretty good in gesture. This doesn't make sense to work out the hand anatomy too much at this phase. Let's shrink this dude to be a little more in frame.
How do we contrast that then? So I decided to put his like hand like way in the background here, but palm downwards. All the streak lines there. shrink his head a little. Don't forget to stretch, y'all. Yeah. I've been stretching on off and on since I started here. I'm just trying to see what would, what happens when I contrast the poses.
And my direction with this is I'm just doing a guy kind of freaking out a little bit like how Reagan is. What I'm kind of doing now is I'm scribbling in, sort of like feeling out stuff. And from that, I get kind of like a cloud pattern effect. Like I can sort of pick out stuff to play with, like this sort of hand pose that came out of me scribbling over there.
Well, this is kind of a rough one. This little playful exercise messing with some of the ideas that Reagan had in his posing. It's not completely working yet, but there's some stuff I can do to make it work. So I got kind of a goony start to like just kind of playing with some of the ideas of contrasting the poses and the hand posing of Reagan's thing. This doesn't quite make sense yet, but it's a way, but this is a way to loosen up. And I could play with it further and like pull something that makes a little bit more sense out of it. But we're gonna go back and take a peek at Reagan again. take a short break and then we will actually be doing another set of 25 hand poses and we'll probably wrap things up but real quick before, uh, I'm going to show, show another peep at that little project I was working on first let me make sure that this one's saved as a new version so I can roll it back if I need to There's the frame I ended up on. So you can see I'm trying to like um, pay attention to some of the contrasting action stuff. 
it's a little bit like what I was talking about in um, in the Reagan poses. So there are hand poses in this too, but they aren't the strongest hand drawing, but the way the camera is zoomed back this far, they don't necessarily need to be. But there is stuff that kind of works and kind of telegraphs the direction of the hands and so on. Like that, for example. And then there's stuff like this where I've like emphasized the uh, size of the fist to make more of a to make more of like a emphasis of the strength of the impact that's about to happen. So yeah, we're going to um, take a little five minute break and then we'll get back to doing another set of 25 hand poses. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll close out with two of them, two sets of 25 hand poses. I think that would be pretty good. So I'm going to get some water and then we'll, okay Google, set timer five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. We will do a 20 set of 25 minute hand poses. And then I think the last set will be 25 minute, 25 minutes of figure poses because uh, Friday will be figure drawing. And it would be a good time just uh, to do a palette cleanse and get into some figure drawing. Maybe try to attach some nice gestural hands onto the figure poses. Anyway, I'm gonna get some water. Make sure this is safe. It's a new version. Oh, that is the new version. Okay. Yeah, you're going to see me just working on this throughout the week. I may actually do some more streams where I do uh, where I do continual work on this as well throughout the week, especially during my morning streams. This and other animation stuff I'm going to be doing. Okay, Google set timer for three minutes. Second timer for three minutes, and that's starting now.
Okay, Google, stop. Okay, Google, set timer 25 minutes. Done. 25 minutes added to your timer. Alright, we'll be doing two more sets of 25 minute posing. We start on a new fresh sheet of hands here. Use this hand right here. I'll actually be drawing the hands for a change that are on screen. How's everyone in chat land doing right now? You were procrastinating, but you came back? Okay. Hands are just so tremendously hard to draw. Um, well, also that reminds me, we're kind of using the same hand pose as we did, ha same hand pose library this week that I gathered last week. Uh, next week I'll be expanding on that and we'll also be going a little bit more in depth on hand anatomy stuff. Remember those palm wedges that I use extensively in order to establish the, uh, the basic shape of the hand. Remember those kind of ball and socket sort of things for the fingers as like your starting point for working out the, uh, working out the general shape of the fingers. Remember the arcs that go over the knuckles on the hand. It's an Egon Schiele painting here. Or drawing. Drew that one a little big, I'll shrink that. See what I can do simplifying this hand a little bit and also using the tornado sun. Egon Schiele, you know him? Yeah, he's a fantastic German expressionist uh, painter from like the 1930s and 20s and stuff. It's 
Twerk has a this kind of beautiful, ugly quality to it. Like all the gangliness of human existential um, human existential pain and anguish of just being alive is kind of present in his work, I just want to say. Does art feel like cynics to you? Hmm. Maybe. I mean, there's some kind of... There's a, there's a certain degree of playful exaggeration that goes on in Cynics' work. I think, I'm sure he's probably pulled maybe a little bit from Egon Chile somewhere in there. Wouldn't surprise me. Or he's pulled inspiration from artists that did uh, that did pull inspiration from Egon Chile. Because there's a lot of... Surprising amount, not, amount of like anime artists that have pulled inspiration from Egon Chile. Uh, Peter Chung. Is one of the big, biz, biggest examples for his work on like Aeon Flux and stuff. Like he, uh, like his character designs often look like Egon Chile, uh, Egon, Ch Egon Chile paintings. But Egon Chile does fantastic hands. He does a lot of other things fantastic too. Um, I strongly recommend checking out his work, but his work can can be very explicitly non-work safe. So just just be warned about that. It's a very simple hand there. What do I could do with it? Very simple, elegant hand, but I don't feel comfortable about handling elegant, at least at my current phase of understanding the hand. So I'll break it down. Just so you guys know, I am doing more morning streams now, so if you do show up for those hours, or if those are better hours for you, I do time posing sessions in the mornings too now. Uh, those are mostly chill and draw streams that I don't really do much instruction on. Um, to be honest, I've been kind of lax in my instruction in these classes too lately, because I've been kind of prioritizing other things at the moment. but. As long as we can meet up to chill and draw and get some mileage in, it should be good. We did cover some interesting stuff today with regarding, like, doing the tornado, for example, on hands. I'll show off a little bit more of that right now, actually. But yeah, you can just you can just start your hands kind of normally how you would. If you're trying to do the like the ho the burn Hogarth ball and socket thing, then you can add some volume to it with the um, with the tornado method. 
directional volume. Yeah, the coil technique, that's another name for it. The coil technique saved my marriage. Yeah, just from doing that, though, like, it, it, it defines the hand a little better, you know? Like, if things are feeling a little flimsy and lacking in structure, you can kind of use this to sort of figure stuff out a little bit more. It's always handy like that. <laughs> handy. There's just some really challenging clasping hands happening on screen. I'm a little worried about handing the, handling those. Handling those. Let's see what ha what I can do, like maybe starting with a couple palm wedges that are just kind of placed against each other, like this, without drawing the fingers in, but kind of like visualizing where the fingers kind of might be. This is a puns. Yes. I thought you were safe from the dad jokes and puns this evening. Yeah, we're in this for the long haul, folks. We'll be doing another 25-minute session after this one ends. And reminder, uh, Friday we'll be doing figure drawing. Friday's figure drawing will be... I'm actually not quite sure what I'm going to focus on for that one yet, so give me a little while to think about that one, but I have some good ideas that I'm tossing around. I haven't quite strategized how I'm going to integrate animation into it, but as of yet, but, but we'll see. There we go. So I think that was a pretty good strategy that worked out for me. Like, instead of drawing the like the super detailed fingers in, um, I went for the palm wedges and kind of like visualized about where the fingers would be when I draw them in later. So that's a thumb over here, I believe. mistaken. Oh well, yeah, I have a recommendation of a YouTube video to check out. I'll link it later, but it, it's, a, it's a story that I had no idea about uh, regarding a certain film called, a film called The Evil Within, and that's not the original film's title, by the way. Uh, it was at, that's the title it was given in order to in order to like shock sh sh like schlockily try to like capitalize off of the successful game that just came out the evil within um, around the time but it has nothing to do with that so uh, what the movie evil within is it's a movie that a um, a son of an oil billionaire spent 15 long years trying to make and it was like a pseudo autobiographical movie about his own personal demons and about trying to mesh nightmares and dreams with reality. And it's kind of a clumsy film, 
clumsy spectacle of a film, but it was like it was like a magnum opus for this like first time, fil- like billionaire's son filmmaker who like spent a ridiculous amount of money making this uh, making this movie where he did most of the special effects himself and he lived like humbly and bought like tons of equipment to make the movie himself. And basically financed the whole thing out of pocket and made it over the span of like 15 years and stuff. And it's a uh, it's a pretty interesting film. I haven't watched it yet. But uh, I want to now. Uh, the reviewer said that it's it's pretty good, pretty good film, um, clumsy, and it's a little Tommy was over the room, unintentionally weird, at, uh, like awkward at times. But um, but worth watching because it has like some of the most it, it's stuff. It, there's stuff in it that's gonna stick with you for your life. Uh, like there's some David Lynchian bizarre imagery in it. Like it's it, it, here's this here's the sad thing. Like the um, the filmmaker worked himself to death before the film was released. Like he wound up like overstressing himself and had a number of other health issues that kind of just piled up and wound up killing him. And part of it was to do with the amount of like stress he was putting himself under trying to finish this uh, this film that he was making. Yeah, the film's called *The Evil Within*. It's a 2017 film. Um, let me see if I can find the YouTube about it. *Evil Within*. I think *In Praise of Shadows* was the YouTuber that that did the thing. Uh, yeah, here it is. *Strange Story Behind the Evil Within*. That's the name of the video. Uh, here, I'll put it on. I'll put it on here. There. And also post it in the classroom chat, but I strongly recommend checking it out. It's uh, the, the video. Uh, I want to check out the film, the, the film itself now. It's like a really, really bizarre artifact of a cult classic kind of thing. Like given the circumstances and under which it was made, and the the intent of the director or whatever. I think we may actually call it short after this next set because I'm getting really exhausted. Unless people want really really want to go for a final set. After this set is over, I mean. How about this? If someone subs to me, if someone subs to me in the next, I don't know how much of the time that there is left on the set, uh, I will happily do one one more twenty five minute. Uh, post to me. It can be a Twitch Prime sub, can be like a regular sub, doesn't matter. If someone subs to me, then yeah, we'll do another we'll do another set of twenty five minutes. But if not, no big deal. We'll just call it a night. So you're going to be regularly doing this. This is a good art workout for an often neglected topic that we're going to be doing every once, every, at least once every week. The hands. Good old hands. We'll be touching base with the hands every week in this class. So all you sloppies who don't practice enough hands, you can get a little hand mileage in. A hand job, if you will. And I fucked up that thumb really bad. Hands are tough as heck. 
It's so worth it to do lots of them. Yeah. You can tell I'm getting exhausted because I'm really fucking up this thumb. Awkward hand there. It's a really nice page of hands. I'll try doing something a little bit more simplistic. Simplistic and stylized. Relatively speaking. So when I'm not following what's happening on screen, I'm usually drawing my own hand. Which is what I'm doing right now. You know it would be a really cool feature to do on, uh, to see on, um, YouTube streaming? So if they had a special, like, screening feature where you can screen YouTube videos by other, uh, by other people. Um, but they, like, everyone who's, everyone is watching it with the streamer, like, they give that, they give that, um, they give that video basically a view or ad revenue or whatever from just having viewed it. It's like a weird sync thing or something. That'd be really cool to like do like screenings of existing YouTube stuff uh, in a way that doesn't get all copyright and cringy or some shit. I don't know. like a dumb idea that probably has like a, uh, a legal can of worms behind it. Okay, Google, stop. Alright, so, oh, 
I may call it quits here. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Okay, five minutes. And that's starting now. But we shall see. I'm still kind of crumpy, like crappy and out of practice at hands, but I'm getting better at them. Bit by bit. Just need to do a lot more of them. quite a lot done today. That and like the animation stuff I did. I think these are my earliest drawings today. For warm-ups or whatever. Yeah, this is from earlier today. Quite a lot of stuff. Is it going to be a congratulations screen? Well, I don't know. It could be. I need to use that thing more, don't I? Yeah, we've only got 25 viewers right now. It might be a good time to end it right here. Uh, like I said, if someone subs to me, that would be plenty of incentive for me to keep going for another 25 minutes. But it uh, looks like we're not going to get lucky tonight. But thanks for the one person who uh, sent me a Prime sub. It was Victrola this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, also, uh, I have to thank the uh, other person who sent me a coffee $20 donation. Um, very generous and very very, thank, uh, very thankful for that. Uh, Noose Ants sent me a $20 donation and said they, they said, I've only been able to make it to one class, but I'm glad you're tempted to go back through VODs to catch up. Thank you for teaching for teaching this class and for people like me who need no, any help they can get. Thank you very much for that twenty dollar donation. Um, let's see if I have any new Patreons. Patreon people to thank. Nope. Yeah, if you're interested in getting a uh, getting like the PSD files of my class demos and my animation files and things like that, um, it's one dollar for subscription on Patreon and five dollar five dollar for uh, five dollar for the PSDs one uh, one dollar for the high quality images of the um, class demos that I do. This particular file is going to include some uh, include some tidbits of this character design that I'm developing and animating. Some neat, really roughs. I'm going to maybe go back in and like draw over some of these and clean them up. Yeah, thank you all so much for coming. Um, thanks again for the support. And we will be wrapping up the stream very shortly. Uh, remember, Friday will be figure drawing class. 
Uh, I'm going to be a little, maybe a little bit less loosey goosey with Friday's class, and probably maybe keep it a little bit more focused on figure drawing. Although we might dip into some animation study to stuff then too. But it depends what I'm going to be doing for that. I want to hopefully maybe have it complement whatever we're doing. Okay, Google, stop. So we're going to call it a night right now. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations.